Deep Dive with David Stendhal, where we trade without ego, no emotion, no greed, no opinion. Before we begin tonight's video blog, please read over our trading disclaimer, and remember to trade smart and accept the reality that trading futures is risky. This presentation does not provide buy-sell recommendations, and our information is strictly provided for educational purposes only. As always, trade at your own risk and analysis. Hey there, it's David Stennett with tonight's Deep Dive. It is December 12, 2018. Can take a look at the euro. Obviously, the reverse is that of the US dollar for the most part. Uh, the ETF uh, for the short side in the euro is EUFX. Now, I'll explain a little bit more about what's taking place here. And I think that the, uh, the primary focus is going to be the trading range that's going on both in the euro and in the dollar. Now, for the euro, the trend, uh, short, intermediate, and long-term all point of the downside. The technical rating is point of the downside. But we're at this conjunction right now where there's a couple of things that uh, you should be aware of. And there's nothing saying that the market is overbought or oversold because they're certainly not in that condition. Uh, but if we take a look at, in specifics, the, uh, the euro here, that we have a lazy day. This is the, the daily alerts. A lazy day 20, which tells us the market is not been overbought or oversold for 20 days. That's a little unusual. We start counting um, in around the, the 10 to 15 range. Uh, we start posting things when we get to 15. And so the fact is, is that uh, this has gone on for quite some time with the market basically meandering to the sidelines and uh, looking for some type of an explosive move, at least eventually. If we take a look at the um, the euro here, uh, this basic on the, uh, the pro alerts, that uh, the euro just put in a pulse low. It's kind of a, a uh, midterm uh, reversal type indicator. It's not the strongest. Pop and stretch are definitely the, the stronger of the alerts, but nonetheless, we did have a pulse load that triggered yesterday, and it's giving me an early warning signal that the market might start to do something. So let's take a look at the market. Uh, this being daily bars here for the euro. You can see the sideways consolidation. You can see the fact that the 50-day is still pointed lower, but we're in this kind of energy zone, and the energy zone uh, it's kind of like a sandwich of uh, support and resistance levels we got the lower level that is right down here uh, and then we have this higher level which isn't that much higher uh, but it is uh, basically um, almost at the high of today's action. So we got the lows that are down here, the highs that are up here, and it's also sandwiched uh, between this support level right here and the 50 day. And the 50 day is still coming down. So I think that uh, the consolidation that we're under, it's gonna just simply add more and more and more pressure, I think, to the Euro. Eventually, it's going to have some type of a move here and that this downward trend, which is slowing, uh, theoretically could start to show some early signs of a bit of a pop to the market. It's not going to happen overnight and the trend is not going to go from the downward trend that we're seeing here on the daily bars to an upward trend immediately. But I'm just letting you know that uh, that there's an opportunity here uh, that if the market is able to hold above this support level right through here, then there's a, a pretty good chance that the market is going to continue to consolidate and then eventually start to uh, meander to the upside and a new trend can emerge from that. So that being the case, so what we want to do is simply watch that. Coming back to the uh, the website and looking at a longer term, for us, longer term at least, uh, we look at the depth gauge and the blue line is certainly still pointed to the downside and there's no sign that it's starting to base. Uh, and so this is a slow moving so uh, indicator. So we're still looking at in the bearish phase, but I do believe with that consolidation and that uh, support level that I've been referring to, we could actually hold here. And if we're able to get this thing to base a little bit, then perhaps we'll see uh, another move to the upside. As it stands right now, just simply looking at uh, the, the systems, uh, part of the other reason that uh, we're looking at this is that um, we have a couple of uh, shorts. We've got a weekly short, which has got some good money to it. We've got a daily short that's been underway for quite some time, which is almost flat right now. Uh, we recently had a daily that went flat on the long side, but just uh, yesterday we had a, um, a long system trigger on 60 minutes, and it's a 60 minute uh, system or the intraday systems that start to 
uh, offset some of the risk associated with the daily and the weekly systems. And so the fact that it triggered as we had that pulse low yesterday and we're in that sandwich uh, energy zone between su uh, support and resistance levels and that 50-day moving average, I'm looking at any new signal that triggers trying to give me an indication as to which way the market, at least on a short-term basis, might be headed. And that being the fact that it just went long uh, just the other day. So it already has a little bit of a profit. Now this is a pattern-based system, and those are the ones that are traditionally early warning signals. The swing base is kind of in the middle of the trend and uh, looking for overbought and oversold type conditions while in a trend. And then the, the trend based systems, which none have triggered just as of yet, but those will eventually start to establish once there's legitimately uh, some type of a new bullish trend that's going to emerge from this. We don't have any of that right now on the short side. And because some of the other systems are um, reactive, uh, that's giving me an indication again that the market is going to maintain this uh, support level that we're seeing here. So that being the case uh, for maybe more so the investors that are out there, you might want to look at uh, uh, different types of ETFs or the, the Euro futures, uh, but you've got to have to view this as a longer term play and not something that you're going to get in and get out of uh, very quickly. I would say for the most part that we're going to, with our systems, look to take advantage of these things, but for a longer term play here, uh, as long as we stay above this level right through here, then we should be good to go. Uh, if we start falling below that, or as the pressure uh, mounts with the 50-day uh, the moving average continuing to come down to where that support level is, uh, that they, and we stay within this energy zone, it's going to wind up, wind up, wind up more and more as an explosive move that's going to eventually uh, pop one way or the other. And the only thing I'm basing this off of is the short-term system that just triggered. So for right now, the bias is to the upside, but this can switch on a, on a second by or tick by tick basis. So uh, just bear in mind that uh, this is certainly a market you want to be watching and uh, be able to start taking advantage of as long as we're above that support level. So with that, uh, we'll take a look at some more markets uh, tomorrow. I will point out that we did have a, uh, a webinar today and the webinar uh, dealt with um, our seasonal tendencies and uh, the process that we go through in evaluating. I'll be posting something on the the website uh, letting you know that uh, that that particular webinar, 60 minutes, uh, went into a fair amount of detail and looked at real-time uh, charts today, that that might be something you might be interested in. And uh, we'll be posting something on our, our, our Twitter page letting you know that that is in existence and that you can download it and watch it at your leisure. So thanks for watching and we will take a look at another market tomorrow. Bye-bye.